Brothers and sisters, friends, guests, everybody, it is so good to see you today on Reformation Day slash Halloween. Worked out great this year that uh, October 31st is a Sunday. 504 years ago in Wittenberg, Germany, 1517, Martin Luther posted his 95 theses and sparked what's called the Protestant Reformation. And so for Family Sunday today, we thought it'd be great to uh, spend some time talking about some of that. So listen, if you are a young one here, if you're normally in seedlings, I need you to come down here and hang out with Pastor Ryan for Family Sunday. You want to come hang out on the floor right here? Hey, if you're not normally in seedlings, but you're a student, you can come up too if you want. Come on down. Hi, Nat. Hi, Ava. What's up, Neo? Give me some knuckles, Neo. Boy, we've got a lot today. How are you doing, guys? Is anybody excited about maybe trick-or-treating later today? Yeah? Yeah. Well, that's good. Here at the church, we do a candy tax. Pastor Ryan gets 10% of all your candy. Yep. Make sure to bring it next Sunday. Okay, ready? All right, guys, you ready? All right. Get your listening ears on. Everyone listening? Okay, so friends, today is called Reformation Day, and 504 years ago, that's a long time ago, something called the Protestant Reformation started. Now, let me ask you a question. Have you ever heard the word reform? Does anyone know what the word reform means? Want to take a guess? Make a form and do it again. That's a good guess, Cash. Very good. What would you say, Nat? It is kind of like doing something again. Now listen, who here is in preschool? Who's in preschool? Raise your hand if you're in preschool. Okay, keep your hands up. If you're in kindergarten, raise your hand. Now listen, what we're getting ready to do is only for preschoolers and kindergartners because the older kid thing is, is in a moment. So don't answer unless you're in preschool or kindergarten. Okay. We're going to teach you what the word reform means. Are you ready? Okay, I'm going to write up here. I'm going to write to 10. You ready? Here we go. What? Wait, wait. Hey, hey, hey. Shh, shh. Wait, wait. Shh, shh, shh. That's right. These kids spot bad doctrine quick. Just wait. Okay. Now, guys... We're going to reform something. You see, because all the pieces are already here, but I'm not so sure they're in the right order. We might have to reform it, right? So let's see. I'm going to count to 10. All right. 1, 4, 3, 2, 5, 6, 8, 9, 7, 10. That's, that's right, right? No? Okay, okay. Only if you're in preschool or kindergarten. What comes after 1? Neo, you are right. Okay. All right, we got it right now. There we go. One, two, three, two, five. Right? No. Oh, what's wrong? Oh, there's another two. Is that right? What's it supposed to be? Four. Okay. Okay. All right. Hey, listen, you got to be patient with Pastor Ryan, right? I'm, I'm learning how to count with y'all. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine. Seven ten. No. Sevens after six. Man, Neo. Thank you. All right. Are we close? Eight comes after seven. Thank you, buddy. What are we missing? All right. Now, now, guys, listen very carefully. Here's what we just did. We just reformed. What that means is all the pieces were there, they just got out of order. 
And 504 years ago, when Martin Luther reformed the church, what that means is he said, hey, you have all the pieces here, but you're mixing up the order. Because the gospel teaches us, first you believe in Jesus, and you're saved. And then the Holy Spirit starts to change you. But the church was starting to say, no, there's a whole bunch of stuff you have to do first. And then God begins to change you. So it had to be reformed. Okay, now you know what? There's a lot more about history we could talk about with the Bible. The problem is I just, I really wish we had somebody here who could teach us about history. What was that? You think it's the build guy? It's the Zane the builder? Is Zane the builder out there? It's the oh, no, Zane the builder's there. It's not Zane the builder. It's the wow. Wait, wait, what about police officer Chris? Could it be him? Oh, no, he's out there. Who do you guys think it is? Should I go, should I go answer it? Oh, my heavens. It's history teacher Ashley. Whoa. Woo. Okay, guys, history teach. Hey, everyone listening ears on, she's going to teach us some about history and the Bible. Who said I'm the boogeyman? <laughs> I'm not the boogeyman. Okay, Pastor Ryan said that I'm a teacher. What do I do? What does it mean to teach? What does it mean? I do teach kids to learn, but you know what? I teach big kids. How big are you? Oh, man. See, you guys make me a little bit uncomfortable. I teach big kids like... Big Jonah. I say Big Jonah because I have little Jonah. And I see the chances back there. I teach kids that are 13 and 14 like Melanie. Okay, give me your ears. Give me your ears. So when I teach big kids at school, it's a little bit different than when you were at school. All right? I just teach one subject. And I'm a history teacher, kind of like Pastor Ryan was talking about. Middle school-ish, that's right. <clears throat> and I teach American history. So that's the history of our country. That's the history of our nation. So what kinds of things do you think we learn about in my classes? <laughs> things that happened a long time before we lived. Who do you think we learn about? Natalie? Natalie? Sometimes we learn about Native Americans. What else? That's okay. Who's heard of Who's heard of George Washington? Oh yeah. I teach about George Washington. I teach about other presidents. I teach about the Constitution. Mr. Evans said that over there. The law. I do. All those things, right? I teach about the United States flag. You can tell what we learn about at my house, right? Okay. <laughs> give, me, give me your ears. You ready? So when we learn about history in my classes, I teach all kinds of facts, right? And things that you can memorize and things that you can know for a really long time. But I also try to teach my students how to do history. We look at how people lived back at that time period. Emmy, Emmy. We look at how people lived. We do that with letters so, and paint, sometimes and paint, and pictures and newspapers. And we try to figure out what happened because I can teach my students about history and they can read, they can read about things that happened in the past through textbooks. But sometimes those things aren't always true. They can be, but we're just people, right? I can teach my students things, but sometimes I can get things wrong. So when we do history and you figure it out for yourself and you prove things that your teachers are teaching you, that can be super helpful. Now, 
Why do you think it's important to learn about the past? Sometimes it can teach us about math. It can teach us about all kinds of things, right? And letters. Well, I would hope you would do more than just trying to ace an exam. I mean, sometimes that's good too, right? Sometimes it's the whole goal. I don't know. I don't know about that. All right. History is important because it has things to teach us. All right. If we study the decisions that people made in the past, we can hopefully learn from those decisions and make good decisions in our lives today. Now, do you think the Bible has good history things to teach us? Yeah. yeah. There's all kinds of stories in the Bible about people who trusted God. They were faithful to God long before Jesus was born. There's stories about Jesus and how good he is. He healed people, right? He helped people to walk. He helped people to see again. He made people not sick. Those kinds of stories from the Bible can teach us to make good decisions today if we remember what some of those things in the Bible had said. Now, here's the most important part. Are you ready for this? <clears throat> if I teach you something, I'm just a human, right? I can be wrong. What about if Pastor Ryan teaches you something? He can be wrong, too. <laughs> Everyone can be wrong, right? And textbooks can be wrong because books are just written by regular people like me, like Pastor Ryan. Textbooks are full of thoughts and opinions and people who think they're right, and maybe sometimes they are, but sometimes they're not. Here's the most important part, though. The Bible is a textbook that is always right, always the Bible was written by men who were inspired by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit gave these men the words to write down so that they would be perfect, so that we could learn about them and learn God's word. God's word is absolutely perfect. So here's what I'm going to challenge you with today. Anytime that your parents tell you something from the Bible, or your teachers downstairs, or Pastor Ryan... If they use scripture to teach you something, go look that scripture up. That's what I teach my students how to do, to go prove it. Because sometimes even when we're teaching, we can make mistakes and things can come across in a way that we don't intend them to. But the Bible doesn't do that. The Bible speaks to us perfectly. So when Pastor Ryan comes back up and he's going to talk about Reformation Day, listen to the words of scripture that he has for us. And then sometime this week, go home and look those up with your parents with an adult, they can help you find it, and it will prove to you that God's word is true. Sound good? All right. Let's go. Everyone say thanks, history teacher Ashley. Okay, now guys, remember what Ashley just taught us, that we go to the Bible, we learn, because it teaches us the truth, and we figure things out. Listen, if you are in first Second, third, fourth, upgrade, I need your help now. But you have to pay attention if you're going to help me. Is everyone ready? Okay. Now we're going to put a verse up on the screen. I'm going to teach you what's called the five solas of the Reformation. You don't need to know that word, but you're going to learn a lot this morning. You ready? We're going to read a verse together, and then I need your help with something. So let's put it up. All right. Can someone read that really loud? Connor, go for it. Thank you, Connor. I'll read it again. For you are saved by grace through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is God's gift. Everyone think about that. You are saved. It's not from us. It's God's gift. Now, ready? I've got two pieces of paper, and we got to see which one is closer to the truth. Now, here's the first one. Here's what it says. It'll be on the screen with us. I can save myself by being a really good person. And proving I'm good enough for God. Okay, here's the second one. I am saved by God's grace alone, and it's a gift. Which one's the right one? Uh, the last one. The last? This one. one. Well, you see, this was sola number one. And sola in Latin means alone. 
We are saved by God's grace alone. Okay, well, let's go on to the next one. Here's the second verse. Ready? Who wants to read this? Ellie. Very good. For we conclude, or in other words, we have decided, we have learned, that a person is justified, that's a word for saved, by faith apart from works of the law. Apart from works of the law. So here we go. We got got two things. Ready? If I try really hard and do many good things, I can earn God's approval. God approves of me through faith in him alone, not my good deeds. Which one's true? Number two. two. Okay. Well, here's the second sola. We are saved by God's grace alone through faith alone. Okay? Next verse is, Nat, you read it. Great reading, that. Very good. There is salvation in no one else but Jesus. For there is no other name under heaven given to people by which we, by which we must be saved. Now, ready? Let's read these together. You've got to help me figure out which one's right. There are lots of ways to know God. You just have to try really hard to be a good person. Knowing God and being saved by God is only through Jesus. 3.1. Which one, guys? 3.1. Is the first or second one? Hey, you know why this is such great news? Well, because we're not always good, are we? Is that a surprise to you all? No? Okay, ready? Let's go to the next verse. Okay, let's see. Cash. Righteousness. Great job, Cash. History teacher Ashley just told us this. All scripture is inspired by God, which means it comes right from God. Profitable for teaching, rebuking, correcting, training, and righteousness. Okay, here we go. We have two more of these. The Bible is just an old book written by people, and there is some truth in it. The whole Bible is God's word, and it alone has authority to tell us who God is. You're kind of seeing a pattern here, aren't you? You're seeing a pattern here. Okay, guys, we've only got one more. We've got one more. Here we go. All right. Let's see, who hasn't read yet? Elliot. Wow. Whether you eat or drink or go to school or make your bed or clean your room or brush your teeth, whatever you do, do it to the glory of God, which means do it to worship God because you love him. And so here we go. Ready? Two more. This is the last bit. Our lives are all about living for ourselves and doing what we think is best. Our lives are all about loving God and giving him glory because he alone knows best. Okay. All right. Now, everyone listen, because, guys, this is huge. This right here. There is so much truth here. Oh, oh, whoops. Oh, boy. Okay, ready? Here's the five. Ready? We are saved by God's grace alone, through faith alone, in Jesus Christ alone, according to the Bible alone, for the glory of God alone. That was the Protestant Reformation. That's why we have a church like the Seed Church today. Because of what happened 504 
years ago when Martin Luther rediscovered the gospel. All right, friends, can you pray with me up here? Can we pray?